The gospel has so, been so watered down. I mean, there are demons that be comfortable in many churches today. I was a voice in my time In a world of fakes and lies Welcome to this edition of Dateline Babylon. I'm your host, Doc Burkhart. In the past several weeks, our flagship program, True News, has been exposing the invasion of sexually explicit content in the culture, especially as it relates to television. We've been shocked by some of the images that we've seen and have asked the question, what else is left to entertain us? Today on Dateline Babylon, we're going to be looking at how the sexual sins of American entertainment and culture have invaded the church. Before we get started, let's go back to our fundamental truths found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. And the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now in recent weeks, we have looked at the events happening within the Catholic Church here in the U.S. We've learned that bishops and other leaders of the Roman Catholic Church in Pennsylvania covered up child sexual abuse by more than 300 priests over a period of 70 years, persuading literally thousands of victims not to report the abuse and law enforcement not to investigate it, according to a searing report issued by a grand jury. The problem, however, is not limited to the Catholic Church. Protestant churches have been dealing with this issue for decades, yet somehow it's not an issue that is talked about much from the pulpits of America. How deep is the problem? Well, please allow me to share with you some headlines from just the past two weeks. Let's start with Daryl Ferrier. He was a youth minister of Freedom Church in Oak Ridge, New Jersey, charged with third-degree child endangerment and third-degree child pornography. He met a 15-year-old, had been texting sexual conversations with that young person. He had over 100 child pornography in images on his phone. That's one. Let's also look at Edward Sobey. He was a trustee of the United Methodist Church of Albion, Michigan. Authorities found hundreds of child pornography images on, uh, at his home. Sobey was charged with two counts of distributing child pornography, two counts of possession of child pornography, five counts of using a computer to commit a crime, and one count of accosting children for an immoral purpose. He was actually outed by an online vigilante group looking for child predators. Let's also look at Mallow Victor Montero. He was a youth pastor of Faith Baptist Church in Wildemar, California. He had, there's alleged four victims of his sexual abuse in the youth group that he oversaw. That occurred over an 18-year period. He's been charged with seven felony accounts of sexual abuse. And then finally here in Florida, let's not forget Ricardo Strachan. He was a senior pastor of Prophetic Worshippers International Church in West Park, Florida. Strachan and the stepdad of a 13-year-old girl repeatedly sexually assaulted the victim. The victim was threatened with voodoo curses if she talked. And according to police, this church pastor had sex with the girl more than 36 times, either in the parking lot of a high school during school hours or at a nearby motel throughout the year 2016. These are leaders in the pulpit. These are pastors standing in the pulpit. And if this is what is happening in the pulpit, how bad is it in the pew? Well, the problem of sexual sin in the church in America today is pandemic. And with the advance of the digital age, the problem has only gotten worse. For example, 71% of adults and 85% of teenagers and young adults who have viewed pornography did so using online videos. 
Magazines, graphic novels, on-demand videos, and cable or rented purchased DVDs, they're a thing of the past. They're a small part of the market. Not only is porn more accessible in the digital context, but unsolicited porn has increased substantially as well. Nearly half of young adults say they come across porn at least once a week, even when they aren't seeking it out. And nearly three quarters of young adults and half of teens come across what they consider to be porn at least once a month, whether they're seeking it or not. And those numbers are from the Barta Research Group, which specializes in information regarding churches and the all, those calling themselves Christians. Now, joining me today via Skype is someone who is on the front line in the combat zone against the invasion of pornography in the church today. Here is Luke Gibbons, church relations and marketing specialist with Kingdom Work Studios, who have produced a teaching program for churches called the Conquer Series. Luke, welcome to Dateline Babylon. Thanks for having me on the program today. It's great to be here. Luke, you deal with uh, these issues on a day-to-day -day basis, but those profiles I just read out to you, do they shock you still? You know, it's interesting. It, it is, it is tra tragic, and every time that it happens, it's a tragedy, but we have to realize that as you've, as you've shown, that it's not rare. It's happening more and more, and it's going to continue to escalate until we, as the church, start to really address this from leadership within the church. And pastors are in a particularly difficult situation to be able to address this issue if they're struggling with it, with it in their own lives, because they've got no one to talk to. They can't talk to their own congregation about it. And a lot of the times, pastors don't necessarily have uh, a support network that they can go to. So you can see we're creating this place or this atmosphere where churches are going to continue to have these incidents come up. And uh, these profiles I pulled up, Luke, believe it or not, they're just within the past two weeks. Uh, I could go mm. back over months and even years and show literally hundreds of these kind of profiles of leaders in the church that um, you know, they're involved in some type of sexual sin. But at the foundation of a lot of this, Luke, and, and I think you would agree with me as well, is that pornography is really the gateway to these deeper sexual sins. It's all sexual sin, but the availability of pornography today, I mean, it's so easy to access it. It's just, it comes at you. It's thrown at you constantly. Yeah, absolutely. And what we talk about in the Conquer series helps us kind of understand how this is happening how uh, people in, in church leadership fall into this and and how it becomes, like we're not just talking pornography in a lot of these instances, but child pornography and um, usually a much older man committing adultery with, with a, a younger woman or a, a child even. And that is because we have this arousal template that is set up from the time we are born and that, that is being created as we grow up. And for a lot of teens today, when they're sexting and sending images of themselves to one another, that's creating an arousal template for kids who are as young as 11, uh, 12, 13 years old. They're seeing images of other kids who are that same age. So that creates the arousal template at that age. But as that person grows older, that arousal template stays the same. And so they will continue to be attracted to um, people who are eight, who are the same age, 13 years old, as they get older, and then uh, that's why we find that there's these instances that the people aren't able to break free from that that arousal template that they've created for themselves. Well, Luke, um, you know, having been a pastor myself and uh, started churches, uh, different places, you know, we've I understand the pressure that pastors are under, just on a day to day basis, and uh, you know. But this issue alone, uh, Luke, is, is such a, it's tearing apart the church, literally, mm. because uh, it's so pervasive. Uh, what percentage of men in the pew, let's not talk about the pulpit yet, but in the pew themselves, just in a regular church, you know, a regular mom and dad church, how many men do you think are dealing with the issue of pornography? Yeah, we, we see that about 68% of men uh, struggle with pornography. Actually, I think the statistic is much higher, but, but verifiable statistics show us from surveys that have been conducted that it is about 68%. So you can imagine if you're sitting at church on Sunday and there's a line of guys sitting in a row, you know, every second one of those guys is at least struggling with pornography. So on a normal Sunday morning when you see men sitting in the pew, seven out of 10 men in, your, in the congregation are dealing with some aspect of pornography one way or another. Is that right? 
Absolutely, yeah. And I believe it's even higher than that. But, you know, obviously when people respond to surveys, like I had a struggle with pornography myself. I never responded honestly to those surveys. I always hit it up because I didn't want someone looking over my shoulder and seeing what I was responding. So I think even in reality, it's probably much higher than that too. Now, Luke, you're constantly dealing with this issue and you're constantly finding statistics and reports. Um, how difficult, I mean, or how bad is it in the pulpit? I mean, would you say percentage-wise? Probably, yeah, well, probably 20%, right? No, it's over 50%. So over 50%. it's quite shocking when you think that pastors who, who are spending their time, uh, in some cases they're preaching about this from the pulpit, but they often may be struggling with it themselves. So across America on any given uh, Sunday morning, you've got a 50-50 chance that your pastor is uh, in involved at some level with pornography. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely true. They'll that's... either have a current struggle with it or have struggled with it in the past. But yeah, absolutely, it's, it's much higher than 50%. So. Uh, that's, but not my pastor, right? Not my pastor. <laughs> That's always the thought, isn't it? It's like, it's not in my church. No one struggles with that here. But the reality is there is not one church that I've heard of who, who doesn't have, since I've been talking about this topic, where they can say, well, honestly, there's no, no issue here. But every, every church has this issue and uh, people need to realize that and need to start addressing it within their congregation. If it's not being talked about, it's probably much higher than you think it is. You know, a lot of churches today, uh, when they have new workers come on board or new staff members, they have to go through a background check because, um, you know, mo the molestation of children or uh, other people within congregations has been skyrocketing as well. H have you noticed any connection between uh, the pervasiveness of pornography and th the next level of sexual sin, whether it be uh, uh, molestation or even violent sexual activity. Uh, is there any connection between the two? Yeah, certainly the Conquer series is used in a lot of prisons across the United States to help people, especially sex offenders who are trying to recover from it. And in those, in those prisons, what we see is a, a level of, of people who report that it started with pornography. A lot of them say that pornography is involved in some way in, in their crimes that they committed that landed them in prison. So it, I believe definitely that it is something that is really a gateway to other things and will lead to, maybe not for everybody, but for definitely a, a, a number of people, it is leading to worse things as, as people become more exposed and uh, go further and further down that track. It's not something where people just moderately view it. It, it, it is a gateway to something else. Luke, would you say that part of the problem that we have today in relation to pornography is trying to define it anymore? Because it's so pervasive in our culture. Uh, when we see uh, uh, sexual activity being simulated on the Cartoon Network, for instance, or, or uh, what, what we'd consider general viewing in the home, has the definition of pornography changed as far as the American mindset is concerned? I think so. I think the perception has changed over time and what would be considered hardcore years ago is now mainstream, which is quite shocking because the way that that is influencing our uh, culture, our mindsets, uh, has, a, has a big impact on, on everything, on the way that we live and the way that we relate to people in our family. It really is starting to seep in and affect us uh, on every level. And so what we really need to do is come back to scripture and let God disciple us. We need sexual discipleship for men and for families and for the whole church communities. There needs to be discipleship in this area because we've been silent on it for too long. And we know that when we're silent on this issue, that, that mainstream culture won't be silent on it and they will teach when we're not teaching. So what they're teaching is a completely different uh, concept to what God would have us what God has created for us to follow in terms of how we can have biblical sexuality. I used the term sexual discipleship. That's the first time I've ever heard that term used. What would that actually look like in, in training men and women, of course, and teens as well into being discipled in the area of proper, uh, a proper perspective of sex? What, what does that look like, Luke? Yeah, it's getting a good theology of sex. Like God does talk about sex in the Bible, believe it or not. And so it's starting to get into that, get, get into God's word and understand that. 
And then as we as we find through the Conquer series, that's really what we see is sexual discipleship. That's training guys in how to live out their sexuality in a healthy way, in a God-given way. And so that's things like meeting regularly with guys and talking about what you're struggling with and having a way to confess your sins. Um, you know, in, J- in James, it talks about confess your sins to, to one another so that you may be healed um, and pray for one another. So those are things that we need to be doing on a regular basis and understanding that theology of sex. But also at the core of this, what we, what we understand through the Conquer series is it's not just about sex. For a lot of guys, pornography is about medicating the pain that they have in their life. Okay. And so we have to learn ways to appropriately deal with pain that we might be struggling with and really get to the root of why we might be getting into bondage with uh, pornography or uh, even other um, incidences of sexual abuse and that kind of stuff. Luke, um, I'm sure there are men watching this today that are saying, are you telling me I have to talk to other people, tell other people about my addiction, about uh, the the sexual sin going on in my life? That that sounds worse than the addiction itself. How would you address a situation like that? Yeah, it can be really daunting, and I can really understand it because I had that struggle myself. There was a number of years when I was struggling with pornography when I didn't open up to anybody. I couldn't talk to anybody about it. And God was putting his finger on that in my life. And he's saying, you need to talk to someone about it. And I was like, I confess to you, God, who else do I need to talk to about it? Right. And I really didn't understand that that verse in James chapter five. And I, I it wasn't until I started to realize that God was reiterating to me over and over again, this is something you need to open up to your brothers about. You're a part of a church. I've created the church to be a healing place. And so this is something that needs to happen in the church. Right. And so and, open up to your Christian brothers. Right. So there's power in that confession. The Word of God also says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. But that's not all. Also to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there is a, a power that's involved there in the confession, forgiveness, and then the cleansing part. And that's where the Conquer series comes in, in allowing uh, men and, uh, and others to uh, uh, come to grips with uh, this addiction first, be able to express that in an environment where others are dealing with it as well, allow forgiveness to take place, and then allow cleansing to happen. But it doesn't happen overnight, does it, Luke? No, it, it can take two to five years. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to be struggling with pornography for two to five years, but as you, as you start that journey, you start to realize the underlying stuff that I'm talking about takes time to work through. There's pain there. There's uh, things that you've been avoiding by using pornography um, that you start to need to work through. You need to to go, okay, this is a a past relationship or a past hurt that I really need to start to reconcile in my life. And God's going to do that as you work with him. But it does take for many people a long journey of, of recovery um, but but it's not something we do alone. It's something that we do with a band of brothers, and it's something that we do with Christ working through us. And uh, it's, it is so rewarding too. I can I can speak from personal experience, knowing the difference that God has for us when we break free from this. If uh, someone's watching the uh, uh, this production today, Luke, and they're interested in bringing the Conquer series to their church, their local congregation, what would they need to do? Yeah, absolutely. We have a website, conquerseries.com. That's C-O-N-Q-U-E-R-S-E-R-I-E-S.com. And you can get onto that website. We've got someone online who's ready to chat with you anonymously. So you can talk to someone if that's something that you're struggling with or maybe your partner is struggling with. And we'd love to work with you, whether it's as an individual who wants to go through the series, or if it's a church who wants to get set up to be able to offer this to other people. And we we have groups that we connect people with at churches all around the country and all around the world. And uh, we're so excited to be able to help people on this journey. And we hear things back every day from people who are seeing life transformation through it. It's really incredible. Luke, is this situation hopeless? No, absolutely not. We, we have a great God who is bigger than what we struggle with. And he wants to see healing. He wants to see men transformed from people who are struggling in this area into leaders. And we see that. We see that every single week with guys who've gone into the Conquer Series as men who are struggling and they come out leading the Conquer Series and leading other men to victory. And I believe that's what God wants for you if you're struggling today. He wants to take you on that journey. And so if you would be open to stepping out today, 
to making that first step. Maybe it's getting onto that website and connecting and asking for some help. Uh, that's and and just starting that journey. You don't have to be stuck in this sin forever. A lot of people believe, you know, it's something that every guy struggles with and they just put up with it. But that's not true. That's not what God has Amen. for us. He has something that is much better. And so I just want to encourage guys to to really step out in faith and, and church leaders as well. I want to call church leaders to yes, run this absolutely. for their men and to step out and to say, this is not something we're going to be silent on in our church. We're going to make a deliberate decision to bring to our church healing and we're going to see transformation across all of the families that come and attend our congregation. What's that website again, Luke? Again, it's conquerseries.com or you can call us as well, 561-681-9990. That's 561-681-9990. Luke, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate your efforts at helping churches around the world deal with this very important issue. I want to share with our Dateline Babylon audience right now the trailer for the Conquer series. And this is very Great. exciting. Let's watch this. You'll, you'll get really excited about this. I'm rolling in. church is in the sexual battle of its life. You take it just a standard cookie cutter Christian, don't do this, don't do that, it won't work. It's going to really sweep through the church like a tsunami wave of destruction of the family. I had wanted to fly a jet aircraft since I was four years old. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Hey! And so it was all I was living for. Still think you're a hot shot? You won't last 10 seconds in combat. You know how to fly, but you don't know how to fight. You have to understand how the enemy is personally bushwhacking you. This is an ambush. I'm rolling in. Come on. I was an alcoholic. I was a sex addict. I was completely out of control. Like I had a rope around my leg, they have a noose around their soul. And the harder they pull against it, the worse it gets. That's why trying harder doesn't work. You have to know your enemy if you're gonna win. It's not just gonna go away. Just the power of sexual bondage. It promises you everything, gives you absolutely nothing. It feels as if there's no hope you're never getting out of this. But the shed blood of Jesus Christ guarantees there's a way out. God guarantees you. His word is very clear. The curse will be visited the third or fourth generation. We will create trails in our brain that are just gonna fire on an automatic sequence. You're fighting for the very lineage that God gave you. What a man does in life becomes history, but what he puts into motion becomes his legacy. And if you will break this curse, then your sons and your daughters have a better shot. It took me three and a half years, but I'll tell you now, you know what I'm having the joy of? Is sweet revenge. The very thing the enemy used against me as a weapon, now God is forged by the hammer of his adversity that he's brought in my life, by the hammer of his challenges, by the correction of my soul, and he's formed it into a weapon, and I'm taking sweet revenge against the enemy. And that's what God has for you. bad day determine who you are and how you can fly. It will put a weapon in your hand that you can conquer and begin to help other men. I believe in you, Roberts. Thank you for joining us for Dateline Babylon. This program seeks to be a different kind of Christian content, and I really feel that you need to be a part of what we're trying to do here, and that is to bring the church back to God. On the screen right now, you'll see our contact information. If you have a question or comment, or you feel that you have something to contribute to the production of Dateline Babylon, I would love to hear from you. The best way to get in touch with us is by email. That e email address for now is babylon at truenews.com. That's babylon at truenews.com. Before we leave, I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are individuals that are watching this production today, this episode of Dateline Babylon, 
that are struggling with pornography. And some of the images and some of the things that are churning in their heads and in their spirits right now, they seem unable to harness, unable to control, unable to uh, make sense of. Father, your word says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us of our sins and to cleanse us from all, to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, there are individuals right now that are crying out to you, that are confessing their sins, that are repenting of their sins, Lord. But that's not where it ends. You forgive them, Lord. But, Lord, I pray that they find a group of men or they find someone to plug in, something like the Conquer series, Lord, that would sexually disciple them out of this, out of this addiction. And it is an addiction. It's not just a hobby. It's not just something that catches the eye. It's an addiction. And we confess that addiction right now in the name of Jesus. We confess it. And Father, we know you can forgive us. And we know that you have the ability to cleanse us if we're willing to be clean. I ask you to bring individuals into their lives to help them be accountability partners and help them to hold them to the, their feet to the fire when it comes to forgiveness, Lord. There are people that need to be delivered today, God. And this tsunami of American culture that's so focused on sex, Lord, raise up a standard against it in individual lives. Let them be delivered today in the name of Jesus. Be free. Be free today in the name of Jesus. And if you agreed with me in that prayer, I know God's going to begin to work in your heart and your life to begin to show things to you and be able to bring you on that path of forgiveness and cleansing in your own life. So until our next edition of Dateline Babylon, I'm Doc Burkhardt. And remember that we seek to operate in gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth. God bless you. In a world of fakes and lies.